Welcome to the Dogs Podcast with your hosts, Blake Reniker, Justin Charles, John Nye, and Josh All. Hey, what's up, Browns fans? Welcome back to another episode of the Dogs Podcast presented by Omaha Steaks. Get those steak orders in for the holidays, by the way. Just want to throw that out there. Makes it easy. You don't have to worry about anybody's shirt size or anything like that. So anyway, tonight, me, Josh, I'm with Justin and John, the Flying Jays. We're here. Blake's not with us. He's got family stuff going on, as per usual, on a Friday night. But we're coming here to do the preview for the Browns versus the Jaguars on Sunday. Finally back in Cleveland Browns Stadium. We need to get off the road desperately. We need to get off the West Coast. We need to get back into our home stadium because we'll talk about it here in a little bit. The stats for the defense specifically between the home and road splits are night and day. I mean, it's a completely different team, completely different defense based on whether or not they're home or away. It's really weird, but it is what it is. So, and this week we're on the good side of that. Before we dive into everything, make sure you guys like this video on YouTube. Please subscribe to the channel. If you're listening on audio, we really appreciate you guys. And make sure you follow us on all the socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And if you want more dogs content, if you want to hang out with us and the whole dog pack community on Sunday during the Jaguars game, go to jointhedogs.com, become an official dog pack member, and join the Patreon. We do an after hours episode uh, right during the season. It's we go live in the, in our Discord channel before we do our live show, so it's a lot of fun. We get your input. You guys actually come in and talk to us, and then we just have a great conversation and have a lot of fun. So check that out if you're interested. How are you guys doing tonight? I am well. Thank you for asking. Um, I'm really excited uh, for Sunday because we are going to just stomp the Jacksonville Jaguars. You feeling that? Really fun. You feeling that too? I'm feeling it. Okay. Okay. I like okay. the energy. I'm I'm going to tell you guys, the more this week has kind of gone on, and Justin's going to talk to us about the weather because, of course, he gets to go to the game, and he's always looking at, well, what kind of BS am I going to be sitting through yeah. on the lake? And it's going to be awesome for him, once again, like usual this time of year. But I've kind of had that feeling, too, guys, that, okay, we... I was talking to somebody else about this the other day, you know, we just lost two, two in a row. We just went on the road out west. We lost in Denver. We lost in L.A. But we didn't get killed. Now, the scores were lopsided by the end of the game, but it was fourth quarter blowups, self-inflicted wounds, like a late collapse that led to a lot of those late game points. For the most part, the Browns were in both of those games up until close to the end. You guys agree? I agree with that. I oh, felt like we were... We were- very much in both games and just crucial late mistakes, you know, like you said, just execution. Um, I mean, it is what it is. I, I felt like two games in a row, the defense kind of hasn't shown up completely, you know, not to <laughs> talk bad about our defense, but. Well, uh, no, I'm, you know, I'm glad you brought it up. I mentioned it when we opened. Might as well just dive into these numbers now. So I was, I was okay. putting these home road splits today. And because I wanted to post some stuff online about it because it's very telling. So when the Browns play at home, we average, what is it? I'll just do the quick math. 155.8 yards per game fewer than on the road. So when we're on the road, teams are getting over 150 more yards a game against our defense. I mean, the, the point totals are crazy. We give up, let's see, we've given up 19 road touchdowns versus only seven at home. Um, we've, we get 23 sacks on the season at home, just 11 on the road. And it's an even split. It, we've had six home and six away. So it's not like it's lopsided. It's a, it's an even split and the numbers are just atrocious on the road and they're like top of the league at home. What do you think's a factor in that? Do you think, cause I know going up there, I think it's you the buddy. Scene, scene, I think it's you. It's not, it's not just me. <laughs> I, uh, it's you. It's the as fans. Much as I want to. I do think that they're, the energy in that stadium is has been awesome, uh, especially this year. I don't know if it's just, you know, we're we're feeling momentum. The defense, you know, the defense has been every game that I went to for the most part, uh, minus the Baltimore game for the most part, has been outstanding. Like, that is, even if the offense isn't there, even if the offense is very vanilla, the defense, when they get out there, people are excited and 
they're ready to see something happen. And and it doesn't take long. I mean, it's not like you're waiting around all game for one play. It's every play you're there's something happening. You know, you're impressed with somebody that, you know, executes perfectly. So it is it is fun up there. Um, and it gets loud. It's by far one of the loudest uh, atmospheres that, you know, as far as in recent years that I can remember, a place has been rocking for for weeks. Actually, the whole season, it's been outstanding. So maybe that is part of it. I well, don't know. You know, Andrew Jackson, our boys in the chat, he says Justin's energy is the winning formula. I mean, you you kind of you represent the fans at the game. I mean, let's just be real on the show, at least because you're you got the season tickets. So, you know, that energy is important. And we don't, you know, if say some things start to go bad, you know, on Sunday and, you know, a couple plays, a couple drives just aren't really looking good. We don't need to be like the Steelers fans last night, booing the team and acting like idiots out there. You know what I'm saying? I, oh, that, that was that was different watching that last night. Of course, as a Browns fan, I, I couldn't have gotten more of it. I loved it every second of it. That, that'll get you into an argument with my mom at the game. Uh <laughs> I mean, John can John can uh, attest to this. If you are uh, sitting around us and you slander a Browns player or the team or anything, even if they were right, shots fired, <laughs> shots fired. Uh, it's uh, it, it is. I, I would say I'd like to say that even though like on this show we've said maybe Browns fans can be kind of awful sometimes at least some of the fan base you know what i mean i do think that we're an extremely loyal fan base to to still you know as an entire city for the sports it it hasn't been easy you know what i mean there's it's been rough and all three major sports franchises there's been moments and for most of my adult life it's been extremely tough so for you for fans to still stick around and and still be that loyal and still be that diehard into this team even though over the years, the decisions, some of the decisions with personnel and just <laughs> plays and things that have happened and you're still on board, it says a lot. It says a lot about the group, you know, the fan base in general. So, yeah. John, what do you think, man? Uh, about the fans? Are we talking about the fans? Still? Just the whole, what do you, what do you think? <laughs> Sunday, the fans, the game, the team, the defense, the Jags, whatever, man. Yeah, I think we're going to beat them really badly. I think it's going to be an embarrassing loss. I think the Jags fans are going to turn on their team, and they're all going to be like, "Oh no, what are we going to do?" Yeah. So, uh, well, we're well, well, let's let's go to Trevor Lawrence because I think we yeah. need to mention, you know, for people who obviously there are a lot of fans that probably watch or listen to this show that you know they watch the Browns games, maybe they follow the Browns, but they don't pay too much attention to the other teams in the league, which that's totally cool. So the Jaguars just played on Monday night against the Bengals, and they lost which was great because, you know, that moves them down in the AFC standings and not that we're ever advocating for injury, but Trevor Lawrence did go out with a high ankle sprain in that game. And if you follow like sports docs and things like that, high ankle sprains are typically a three to six week injury. Some players can come right back and play the following week after having the injury, but if they do, they're severely limited. So Trevor Lawrence at this point in time, he has practiced in limited fashion this week he has been you know talking about how he's rehabbing hard he, he's he wants to play he's gonna play the jaguars are going into the weekend with trevor lawrence as a game time decision game time yeah game so time what decision. is that 90 minutes before the game they got to make yes, the decision sir. now wh- i'll get your guys opinion i'll just say real quick my expectation 100 percent is trevor lawrence is going to start that game i think i think he at least gives it a go now does he finish the game I'm not going to talk about that because anything can happen during an NFL game, but I do believe he starts. What do you guys think? We have talked about how well the defense plays on the road, or I mean at home as opposed to the road. And man, if Trevor Lawrence does start, he's going to be under pressure, I think. This is all going to depend on... uh, did Miles' shoulder really hold him back that badly, or did he just have a bad game? So if Miles comes back and is the defensive player of the year front runner, Miles that we've seen, I he's not finishing the game. Trevor Lawrence is not finishing the game, but I do think it's contingent on that though. So when I saw the schedule every year, I, I take a look at the teams that we're going to play, and there's guys that I circle that I'm excited to see play. And so this year, when I'm looking at the schedule, 
this was one of those games where I was like, I I really, that's one thing. There's guys that you go and you watch and you're like, it's one thing to watch them on TV and they make those throws and plays and you're like, wow, that was impressive. When they do it live, it, it really is like crazy to see guys perform at that level. Trevor Lawrence is one of those guys. He, from his college career all the way to this, to this point, obviously his rookie year was a little rough, but he has ascended. He is a... He is a franchise player, and he has turned that franchise around uh, with the help of some other guys. But um, when I saw the injury on Monday night, I was like, "Man, we just got a huge break because they changed." I felt like it changed the whole dynamic of what we what we were going to have to face going into Cleveland on Sunday. Um, and I honestly, I thought at the time, I was like, "Man, that that looked maybe it was like a, a season ending injury." You know, I I didn't know if it was an ankle injury if maybe when his leg got bent back, if something was torn in his knee. Um, now, obviously, I, I'm one of those people. I want to see all the best players out there. Uh, you know, I want to be entertained. I want to see those guys. Um, me personally, and so we just checked uh, the weather right before we got on. It changes like every uh, 37 seconds around uh, <laughs> you know, Cleveland Browns Stadium. Right now, there's a gap where it'll stop raining around 6 a.m. and then it's holding up probably till about 5 p.m. But like I told these guys, every time that I follow that forecast, it piss rains yep. the entire game. <laughs> so I honestly, depending on how healthy he is, do you really want to send your franchise guy out there when they're in, they're in a great position to if, whether it's a high playoff seed? Or even to make a run. I mean, the AFC is not as dominant as it's been in years past. Are you? Are we really thinking that they're going to send him out there on a bad leg and potentially maybe throw the season away? I I don't know. I it's a gamble. Me, man. It's a huge gamble. I thought honestly that they would rest him for a week and then bring him back as healthy as you can for Baltimore because they got Baltimore coming up too. You got back to back kind of gauntlet games against what we would think are very good defenses, especially Cleveland at home defense there. I'm thinking they're pinning their ears back, you know, I, I, especially if they think that he's hobbled and he's not a hundred percent. So going into it, I all week, I thought, man, I don't know if he's going to go. And I keep seeing those reports that, you know, Hey, he's a game time decision and he really wants to get out there. I just, I don't know. I think that if it's CJ Beathard, our chances of winning this game go up dramatically. I agree. I yep. think it com- completely different game plan for the defense. You know what I mean? He's yeah. He's not as dynamic. He's uh, and you've seen backup guys come in and you know people don't know as much about him because they don't have the tape on him. You you've planned for a certain guy all week, but um, I think that that dramatically increases our chances of being dominant in this game. Yeah, but I at the same time, I also think that a high ankle sprain, severely limited Trevor Lawrence, <clears throat> excuse me, could be really good for the Browns defense as well because one thing about Trevor Lawrence and we've seen this, you've talked about it, I believe, right Justin about these other quarterbacks with the mobility and how mm-hmm. they tend to get their way with the Browns defense a little bit. You know, Russell Wilson, Lamar Jackson, some of these guys and Trevor Lawrence, while that's not like his calling card, the dude can move. The dude can get out and run. Yeah. He had a knee injury earlier in the season. I forget which week it was. And he came back the next week with like a brace and they didn't know if he was going to play that game and yeah. probably a game time thing too. And he came out and played and he had like his highest rushing output of the season. For a Thursday, for a Thursday night game. Yeah, that's right. It was right. a Thursday night game that he came back for. And it was like, what? what is it? What are they doing? Why is he running so much? But you know. These athletes are going to athlete. That's just what they do. And if he's limited, though, and he tries to push it, I'm just saying it could be a, a situation where he can't move the way he thinks he can move, and that leaves him as a sitting duck in that backfield for guys to get after him. Look at what just happened to Kenny Pickett. He came into that game very, very banged up, and he's out. I, I mean, they're not saying it's season ending. They're saying it's two to four weeks. But he just surgery. had ankle surgery. Ankle surgery. Um, so... That that's kind of what my point is with the with the whole injury thing with him. Do you, is it worth the risk? I mean, it's not like obviously Houston's coming. Houston's right on their tail in that uh, in uh, that division. How about Indianapolis? And Indianapolis also, yeah, what, two way tie division, and seven and five, and then and then there's what uh, Jacksonville's eight and four now, correct? Correct. Okay, so it's literally a game. Um, but um, I mean, they're they are they're a nice team. They've been a nice team for a while, and they were they were on a hot streak. I mean. Going at this point to be eight and three in the season, you're one of the most, you're one of the elite teams, you know, based on your record. 
in in the division. So I don't know. I I would be. I know I'm seeing a lot of people saying they think he'll also go. I'd just be very very surprised. And, you know, we'll find out Sunday morning what, which way they go. But I do think yep. that either way, I think that the advantage is to the Browns. Obviously, Vegas thinks so, because I wanted to mention this. We opened the week as three-point underdogs. Jacksonville was favored by three, and that was Monday before the game that night. Trevor Lawrence got hurt, and now Cleveland's actually favored by three. Right. The line has Touches. completely flipped. So I, it, we do have a big advantage. And the thing with this Jaguars game is, and I know – Blake left us a message, and if one of you guys wants to read his thoughts, that'd be cool. But I know what one thing he said was, you know, let's not lose our minds. If we lose this game, it's not a must win, but it's a big win if we can get it. And I feel like it's just sitting there for the taking. Like, if we play the way this defense plays at home normally this season, and if we can just... I said I wasn't going to say this anymore, but I guess I will. If we could just not turn the freaking ball over on offense, I think we win the game. I think it's easy. I, I really, I do. I think pressure on Lawrence, don't turn the ball over. And I think I think you can win this game. I mean, look what Jake Browning just did. And I yeah. and I don't uh, I don't want to like tarnish Jake Browning's name or legacy or anything like that. But he <laughs> had looked very very below pedestrian as a quarterback going into that game. That's I true. I turned that game on going, man. This might not be a good game to watch. This is going to be a really rough start of football. We're going yeah. to have this game, and then we're going to have New England and Pittsburgh on Thursday. Like it's going to be a while before you see a good game. That was a fantastic. That was game. one of Anybody the best ones. That, one of the best games I've watched all season. That was a fantastic, fun game to watch. Um, so and just a lot of dynamic going on. We're chatting with the guys and you know Discord and stuff like that, and you know we're going to Jacksonville. We're like, who's their third quarterback? They don't even have one, you know. Oh, and yeah. uh, that third, it looked like he got hurt, and I'm, we're going, man, this is, <laughs> this is crazy. This is a wild, wild game. But um, yeah, should be. Uh, regardless, I, I am very optimistic heading into this game about Cleveland chances. This was a game that I didn't just. If I looked at it on paper, I went, this is probably one we're not going to get. You know right. what I mean? This is, this is a tough team. Obviously, they got to come to Cleveland. They're coming on short week off a of Monday night game. But I just figured, nah, that's that's probably not one of those three that we kind of thought we'd have to get to get to 10, right? If yeah. we really want to take ourselves seriously as getting into the playoffs. But this, all of a sudden, it looks like this this is has a lot of potential. So the, the last thing I'll mention real quick about the Jaguars and why we have another advantage on our side, and then we'll dive into probably the biggest topic for the Browns. But first for the Jags, they lost their leading wide receiver, Christian Kirk, in that Monday night game this past week. And I think that's a big deal because we were talking before the show, like if you follow fantasy at all, you know that there has been a correlation the entire season between Calvin Ridley's good performances and Christian Kirk and Zay Jones both being on the field with him at the same time. When one of those guys isn't there, Calvin Ridley is almost a non-factor. And in this kind of weather game with a hobbled Lawrence, with hopefully Denzel Ward back, I think that Calvin Ridley might not do anything and not having Christian Kirk out there kind of levels the playing field because we might not have Amari Cooper. So, I, and again, not advocating for injuries, not excited that guys got injured, but it does give us an advantage that they're going to be without him. I agree. I agree. A, a kid that kind of you can watch out for, and he kind of came in and got an opportunity as Parker Washington. He uh, stepped in for uh, Christian Kirk, and he looked pretty pretty damn good. Yes, he did. Um They've got weapons uh, at receiver, and then another guy to uh, keep an eye out on is uh, Travis Etienne. Oh, very, man. very legit running back. Kind of banged up. Um, has had a rib uh, injury designation for a couple weeks now. He carried it into that Monday night game. Came out of it. Practiced all week. So, I mean, I, I know a lot of guys are saying, hey, you know, what's going on with Etienne? Is he going to play? I would be shocked if he didn't play. I feel like this, he he will play. I don't. I didn't hear anything bad that came out like he further injured himself as far as rib injury. Yeah. So I would say that he is. He to me, he's the guy that you have to stop. Like, you stop him. I'm not worried about Ridley on on Denzel. I'm not worried about. I mean, Zay Jones is nice, but I feel like Zay Jones maybe against uh, Emerson. I like that matchup. And then if you have Newsom on Parker Washington, I, I like how we're matched up in the secondary. So my thing is we're getting healthy at the right time on defense. We're finally getting guys back. 
I think that there this we've already kind of talked about it, but this is kind of a, a nice, maybe good right get right game. Um, and then if you're facing a backup quarterback as well, my goodness, uh, like perfect storm, uh, but maybe without the rain and you know, tornado stuff going on in Cleveland, just with <laughs> uh, stuff. So, yep. So, before we shift over to the brown side of things, I just want to shout out the chat. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. Yes. Thank you for being with us on a Friday night. Keep the comments coming. You guys have your conversations with us. We're picking stuff out as we go. It's always fun to see you guys. This episode is brought to you by Omaha Steaks. Browns fans, you've heard me talking about Omaha Steaks for like three years now. And seriously, the only reason that I I keep doing it is because I love Omaha Steaks. That's the reason I reached out to Omaha Steaks to establish a partnership in the first place. This food is absolutely extraordinary. It comes at a really really great price. I mean, think about the price you're paying for meats and all kinds of foods right now. The price you pay for the quality you get at Omaha Steaks cannot be matched, beat, anything, anywhere. And this holiday season, Omaha Steaks is the absolute perfect gift to get all the loved ones in your life. For me, it just makes Christmas shopping and getting people gifts that much easier. What do you get for people that, one, you don't really know what they want, you don't really know what they need, and they pretty much have everything they need anyway. People can always use meat. They can always use food. Get them Omaha Steaks gift packs. They throw it in the freezer and it's the gift that just keeps on giving. Go to omahasteaks.com and save 50% off site-wide. Plus, when you use our promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out, you get an additional $30 off your order. Send the loved ones in your life, the tender, juicy, butcher's cut filet mignons, the mouth-watering burgers, the gourmet jumbo franks, or even those easy-to-prepare meals that are ready in a flash. So get this offer now while it lasts this holiday season. Omaha Steaks is ready to ship your order right away. So visit omahasteaks.com. Take advantage of 50% off site-wide plus use promo code DOGS, D-A-W-G-S, when you check out to get that extra $30 off your order. Happy holidays, everybody, and Merry Christmas. Minimum order may be required. This episode is sponsored by Factor. Browns fans, get started on your New Year's resolutions with Factor. America's ready-to-eat meal delivery service that takes all the stress out of meal planning and sets you up for success here in the new year. Skip the grocery stores, all the prep work, and the cooking fatigue. Instead, you can get chef-crafted, dietitian approved meals delivered right to your door. With over 35 meals to choose from per week, including options like keto, calorie smart, vegan, veggie, and more, plus they have over 55 weekly add-ons, you guys have a ton of nutritious and flavor-filled options to kickstart your resolutions. I've personally tried Factors meals. They are incredible. I got a whole bunch of different varieties of things just to see what was what I liked, what I didn't, and I'm not exaggerating one bit. I liked them all. You throw it in the microwave, two minutes, and bam, you have a nutritious meal ready to go on the fly. And the nice thing is when things get hectic, Factor is totally flexible. You can change your order up every week with plans from four to 18 meals per week. You can even pause or reschedule your deliveries anytime you want. So here we go, guys. Let's stress less over our meal times in the new year. Let's get Factor's no prep, no mess meals, no shopping, no cooking, no cleanup. Head to factormeals.com slash the dogs50. That's all one word, the dogs50. Use code the dogs50 to get 50% off your order. That's code the dogs50 at factormeals.com slash the dogs50 to get 50% off. Happy New Year, everyone. So moving into the Brown side of things, who's playing quarterback? Because DTR has cleared concussion protocol. Obviously, Joe Flacco has been practicing all week. The whole reverting back to the practice squad thing was so stupid earlier in the week. People freaking out like, guys, it's just roster management. Not a yep. big deal. He's, yep. in my opinion, if I was a betting guy, I would say Joe Flacco starting this game. I don't really see a reason why you wouldn't go that route. Um but what do you guys think about the starting quarterback for the Browns this week? I'm with you on that. I want it to be Flacco. Um, the biggest thing going against Flacco is his interception was at the worst possible time. And our whole team just kind of seemed to fall apart at the end of that game. And so it doesn't really look great. But if you look before that, he managed that game like a veteran pro. Yeah. You know, with... a uh, He's got the playoff experience and the Super Bowl, and that's what he looked like. He looked like a super experienced guy that was just totally comfortable. So I want Flacco. I don't know what Kevin will do. I have I don't want to predict that, 
but I want Flack a little. Yeah, I agree with you. And, you know, anybody who's followed, oh, Fatal Gnome says, Super Chat, put my money on Flacco. Yep, I agree with you, man. We'll get Justin's thought in a second. But the I put this stat out on Twitter the other day. The the Browns have faced, so the, we've been talking about the stack boxes, why we're not running the ball as much, why we've been throwing, people, why, why would you throw 44 times with a, you know, a veteran quarterback that you just signed, blah, blah, blah. Well, the... Opposing defenses the Browns have faced and since Deshaun Watson's shoulder injury have increased the rate at which they stack the box against the Browns by an average of 63.5%. So they, I mean, it, it was like 20, I forget what the number was, it was like down in the, tw- like 20% of the time we were facing a stack box before Watson's injury. Since then, it's all the way up in like 44 something. I mean, it's 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 huge what, what's happened. So that's why the Browns, I mean, our, our run game is pitiful right now. It really is. I mean, you take out a big run by usually Jerome Ford here and there, and his average is measly, like two or less. Actually, the other day, it was the, either last week or the week before, it was like 1.2 a carry. Yeah. So what do you think, Justin? You, you want to see Flacco or do you want to see DTR? So all I think that's going on right now is this is just, coach doing coach things he is basically making you plan for two quarterbacks they're two different completely different quarterbacks yes um so basically i i would be very very surprised if flacco was not the starter on sunday i i think momentum is kind of pushing that way um i i'm not gonna lie he he was throwing some balls into some tight windows like yeah there was some throws where i was like yikes man that makes me nervous but it just slinging them in there and so i i'm i liked what i saw i wasn't i wasn't upset about it obviously the interception it like john said couldn't have come at a worse time just I, and i agree with you i feel like that with the the missed extra point it kind of was just a momentum breaker you know it just kind of just killed killed the energy on the sideline yeah but um i i will say this i and i've got some buddies that i watched the game with on sunday and they they just said man there we have no threat with the running with the running quarterback with Flacco and there it's just it's not it's non-existent. Don't be surprised yes. if they bring DTR in in some type of packages where and I'm not saying he'll just come in to run because obviously if they see him come in they're like oh you know key up hey he's gonna run the ball. I just think that you know and not coach out thinking everybody outsmarting everybody but don't be surprised if you see DTR come in on some packages and throw the ball. They're going to expect him to just come in and maybe run, or I wouldn't be surprised if he came in. Um, I don't really necessarily like that because I feel like you kind of get your other guys out of rhythm as far as your other quarterback. But if you can keep the defense, you know, honest, and then they don't just full out expect always a pass or they, you know, stack the box like we've said. Um, but I wouldn't be surprised if he had some packages and he did get, you know, a little bit of run. I'm not saying a lot. I'm mm-hmm. talking four or five plays, you oh. know, just something, something different, you know, just a different look. Yeah. I'm totally with you. Zen Menza here. Thank you for the super chat says Joe cool Flacco with DTR and a couple of package plays. That's exactly there what we're is. talking about. And there when you is. say, you know, it kind of gets the quarterback out of rhythm. I don't know if that's necessarily true when it's planned, like it's designed yeah. and planned. Cause you see the saints do it all the time. They pulled Derek Carl yeah, true. and here yeah. comes Taysom Hill. And the thing with that package is when Taysom Hill comes in, there's like a 90% chance he's running the ball and maybe a 10% chance he's going to actually try to throw it. Right. With DTR, I feel like you're 50-50. Yeah, you don't know. And even if you throw the ball. him out to sweep, he can still step back and maybe throw the ball. So, Because mm-hmm. he he is a legit quarterback where Taysom Hill's just, he's, he's a really good gadget player. You know what I mean? So yeah, I agree. With, with the honed skills at quarterback, you know, his arm strength and everything, I think DTR, what are you going to do? And I, I think... This will be where some fans will say, oh, Kevin's getting cute. But you got to understand, right. if they're, especially if they come out early, like the first or second drive and they show a look with DTR and they run the ball. They're setting up a pass later in the game. And the Jags know that, but they don't know mm-hmm. when it's coming. You know right. what I mean? Because the next time they put him in, it's like, well, last time they ran it, well, we run it again. You know what I mean? I think it's a really good advantage. It'd be a smart thing to do. Agreed. I, and... I think it's interesting also, we kind of went into this week thinking that we probably weren't going to have Amari um, at the press conference today. They said they're not ruling anybody out. So Amari may go. Honestly, I think I think you saw something in the last game that 
there's there's some chemistry there between Joe Flacco and Elijah Mora. There's there's From something the Jets there. Days. Yeah. Yeah, there's something there between those two. Um, and he looked for him and looked for him often. Um, so I, I'm I'm curious. I obviously if you have Amari out there, it it's a whole different you have a legit wide receiver one that can get open and have no problem, you know, to handle the business. But um yeah, I, I'm just hoping that we come in as healthy as possible. Uh I don't know really know what's going on with Dewan Jones right now. It says, you know, he missed practice and it's unknown. Tweaked his name. That was that what it was? Tweaked okay. Knee. That's yep. a, so he's a yeah, game so time decision. That's tough. That's that's I mean, how many more injuries can we have? Well, that time? if we've what's got going on and is <laughs> and what's going on with Wills, uh, you know, how many more games does he have? Is it one more and then I, he's back or Well, oh, I think he's got one more and then he's eligible to come back if he's eligible if he's correct. Red, yeah, yeah, if it's yeah. healthy, but you're talking Jerron Christian again at left tackle. You're talking if Dewan Jones can't go, then you're talking James Hudson. And one guy we did not mention for the Jags that I think we probably should. Yes. Is not the quarterback, but the defensive no. end, Josh Allen. Yeah. Legit, legit game breaker. Can it just, he, he uh, doesn't get as much shine as like some of the other elite defensive players in the league, right? He's not like, um, like a, like a, a Watt or a Bosa. This guy, if you watch him, he he's very disruptive. He's everywhere. If uh, that play that Cincinnati ran where oh, Tyler, you Boyd, want to talk about a coach getting cute? If Kevin had called yeah. that and it happened, th- this fan oh. base would have melted down to nothing. That you know what I mean? A, oh. no, no, but if so, you didn't see the yeah, play, Tyler, yeah, ahead. Tyler Boyd takes you know um, basically a, what like a ladder of like a like a like a like, a, like a sweep jet sweep or something, a, yeah. right? And then decides he's going to go quarterback style and throws it back across uh, the middle of the field right to Josh Allen. And uh, so not only has he got great hands because he intercepted the ball. If you watch that game, he was he was in the backfield a lot. He was yeah. very disruptive. And, and Browning had a nice game, but um, he he's very very good. And if we're if we're weak at tackle and they're smart and they move him around a little bit. He could he could wreck some wreck some things that we were trying to do on offense for sure. Yeah, yeah. He concerns me on their defense. We were kind of talking before the show. Outside of him, mm, and uh, you know yeah. they're okay. Obviously, they're you know eight yeah. and four on the season, so they're they're they got a good defense. But he's the the key guy that I think we need to shut down. I do not feel like they've got the defense like the Browns do, where you know if Miles isn't making an impact, I mean we still got Smith, we still got Oboe, we still got Tomlinson and. You know Elliot and Hurst and these other guys. So, uh, Fatal no, Gnome threw in a follow up here. He says, "If Flacco starts and we not only win but we win big, does he start the rest of the season?" Uh, health willing, like if he doesn't. The thing with Flacco, this is the only concern that I have is that he can't hold up for the rest of the season. That, that's my only concern. Whether it's like five games. I know. That's a, well, you know, maybe some playoff games. Come on. Now. Well, okay, okay. I'm sorry. Rest of the regular hey, 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 regular. I don't want to jump ahead of things, you know, get ahead <laughs> of myself or anything, but that's I guess that's my only concern. Um you've seen him in spurts over the last few years. You've never seen him go out there and play seven, eight games. Um it's always, you know, two, three, a benching, you know, and then you know, sit on the couch for a little bit and but that that first game, that performance that if we could get that, you leave that interception out and you cleaned up some of the little mistakes and stuff like that. That that looks like a recipe with an elite defense that shows up every week and there's pressure up front. My biggest thing is, man, our our front has been kind of struggling. Our mm-hmm. I feel like they just didn't get home against two kind of I mean, Russell Wilson's you know, he's nice, but are would you think that Russell Wilson would be like a guy that we'd be worried about, you know? Um, and then obviously Stafford, I figured that was, he, I figured he was going to be very statuesque back there. And we never, I don't even know if we, we didn't get a sack, but I, what was there two QB hits and that was it the entire game? Pressure was very, like there, very low, very was, weak. It, pressure was not there. It, there. There wasn't any, it was, it was, you know, for a defense that, you know, that's what they pride themselves on. We've talked about it so many times all of us if you know if you can't get home it doesn't matter how good your cornerbacks and your you know your secondary is 
eventually elite <laughs> wide receivers and weapons get open. It's yep. you only have so much time to, you know, shut them down. So we I think we have to have to have to get pressure up front. If we don't, I think you're gonna see another similar game that you saw the last couple of weeks where we're just we can't get off the field. Yeah. So I see a lot of people in the chat talking about Ward. You know, you mentioned Dewan Jones. I'll kind of go through the injury report here real quick before we kind of wrap everything up tonight. But John, was there anything else that you wanted to kind of chip in about this game or anything that we've talked about so far? Well, just to address the question of if Flacco should be a starter for the rest of the season, I would say yes this year um, because of the playoff experience. Oh, uh, the playoffs are very much alive for us right now. Yeah, you know, I I would still pick us to get a wild card spot. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. and obviously, I think winning the division is it would take a miracle. I think that ship kind of sailed, but we're the five seed right now. Yeah, we got some winnable games ahead of us. I think this one coming up is one of them. Flacco was the perennial playoff starting quarterback for a, a while, and. I don't, if we make the playoffs, I'd rather not have DTR. And it's not a knock on DTR. No. Mm, Lacko has been there. He understands the pressure. He understands the playoff atmosphere on a road playoff game. DTR's not seen anything like that. But Flacco's seen it many times. And that's the biggest reason I would want to start Flacco uh, moving forward is because of the playoffs. I think that's a really good point, man. I I was just, I glanced over at the chat, Preston Herring, he says, if this D-line doesn't get to that one-legged Jesus-lucky fat bro, frat bro at least three to four times, I will break my TV. <laughs> Me too. Me too. And I'm oh, not even going to have a TV. Man. I'll find a TV to break and get arrested. I'll spend the night in Cleveland, not at the municipal station. <laughs> not good. Get that bail money together, guys. Get it together. Oh, man. Um, Okay, so real quick, they're really honestly the good thing about the injury report this week, other than, of course, our guys on IR who are just out. Um, It's not bad. It's actually not as bad as we thought it probably could have been heading into this game. So uh, starting at the top, Amari Cooper going into the weekend is questionable officially. He did not practice Wednesday, Thursday, but he did practice today in a limited fashion. Like Justin said, that's it's a good sign for him at least suiting up. I don't know. I don't have an update on here whether like he's in concussion protocol or right. he's just dealing with the ribs concussion. That's all that's listed. So as long as he gets I out of the protocol, if he's in it, then he gets out tomorrow. Right. Then he's playing. He's going to play, I think. I agree. I agree. Um, and that'd be, that's huge. Yeah. That's huge. It is. It's definitely huge. So the only other ones that are questionable, obviously we talked about DeWan Jones tweaked the knee the other day in practice, has not practiced, did not practice today either. But then you've got Cam Mitchell coming off of IR with the hamstring. Limited practices this week, but practiced in full today. Questionable for the weekend, but I think he's going to play. And same with Denzel Ward. Limited Wednesday, Thursday. Well, and limited today. Questionable heading into the weekend with the shoulder. I think he's going to play too. What do you guys think about Denzel? I heard good things so far. I heard he's back more or less. Um, So, wow. That would be... A difference, man. He is, he's a, a veteran now at this point. He is the leader of the secondary. And we've talked a lot about our secondary because we got some studs, but I think Denzel Ward's the man. I mean, he is, he's a dog. He definitely is. I mean, we talked about the secondary on Monday's show after the game. Newsom and Emerson actually had pretty good day. They each had a good game against the Rams. A lot of the yardage, the chunk plays, the big passing yardage that the Rams were getting came against mismatches with our linebackers. So, you know, we need to get that sorted out. And I think having Denzel Ward back in the game helps out a lot. I'm uh, I'm excited uh, to see some Cameron Mitchell back on the field too. Oh. Uh, because as much as it's been tough the last few weeks and, you know, we've had to lean on some other guys, uh, Mike Ford has been struggling. Mike oh. Ford has been very, that's been tough and not to knock a guy. I know he's a know. special team that, ace for, a yeah, yeah, there, that's very tough to come in and then like play meaningful minutes, like starting minutes, basically. 
So I'm I'm excited to I, I like Cameron Mitchell a lot. I you know, I, I think about that play where I think it was Seattle where he pretty much could have just walked the ball in for yes. pick six. Just yep. kind of went off his hands. He kind of he's he's got a nose for the ball. He's and he's nice, nice player, you know, in limited opportunity. So I'm glad to get him back. If we can just get healthy, I think that's the biggest thing right now. Like I don't know how many more injuries this team can sustain and then still we can still expect a good product out there. You know what I mean? At some point you have to break and not bend. And yeah. for some reason, this team is very resilient, just keeps fighting, but it, you know, it's, it's crazy how many injuries this team has dealt with. It's very crazy. It, it is. is nuts. You know, that's, that's a hat tip to Kevin Stefanski for having this team bought into the mission and what they're trying to do. We've been talking about it all season long. There's a lot of Browns, well, I'll just call it Browns Twitter, that I don't know how Browns fanny they really are because they really do seem to sincerely expect this team to operate as if everybody's healthy. And I keep trying to remind people, this is not a Deshaun Watson, Nick Chubb, fully healthy offensive line type of offense we're running right now. It is, please, God, get something to go here. And that's really we're what so, we've been dealing Yeah, We're so far past have, that. We're so far past that that it's the if you would have told me this is where this team is with all those losses, I'd have, I'd have said you're crazy. There's no way, you know, as a Cleveland fan, there's no way that that's possible. Yeah, go ahead, John. Sorry, buddy. Yeah, that's all right. I was just gonna uh, just one more thing. We kind of talked about it, but um, I was texting Blake during the game last week about the secondary and without war, the quarters kind of looked like they were getting burned, but. Uh, one of the things we kind of agreed on this too. That's what happens when you get no pressure at all. Yeah. Uh, Our line needs to get to the quarterback. I mean, I saw, and I don't know if it's the packages we were running or if they just came with a game plan to stop us. I really don't know. But we got no pressure. It was really hard to watch. Like, no pressure at all. And of course your quarters are going to get burned against pro- NFL wide receivers, they're going to get separation eventually if they have that much time. Especially when the so, league's built for that. Let's yeah. get to the quarterback, please. <laughs> yes, we're we're begging for that because, again, whether it's a hobble Trevor Lawrence on one ankle or it's C.J. Beathard, we got to get after them. We got to make them look like Joe Burrow looked in week one. That was a wet, rainy, kind of crappy game, too. Yep. And he didn't even, what, he wasn't even close to 100 yards passing, right? Wasn't it like 80-something? Yeah, I thought it was like 86. I mean, we we can do this to good quarterbacks. And the thing with Trevor Lawrence, he's in year three. You know, he's he's not really ascended the way that I think a lot of people thought or expected projected. Him, yeah. yeah, expected him to this year. But he's still he's still a very good quarterback. Yeah, um, yeah. But I do think that he's susceptible. We can we can definitely shut him down if we get the pressure. Like John said, I think that's a perfect perfect point. And one last thing too, I did want to mention like. Shout out Andrew Barry. I mean, we're sitting here talking about how badly this team needs Cam Mitchell, a sixth round rookie this year, and Dewan Jones, what fourth or fifth round rookie that like fourth, yeah. You yeah. think about it, Andrew Barry and people online want to bitch and complain all the time. All those first round picks for Deshaun. Mm, Browns are doing just fine without him. Just fine without him. Yeah. Just I fine. wish we had him. <laughs> I wish he wasn't hurt. Oh. Dude, if we had Deshaun White, I mean, I think we we would be firmly in the driver's seat right now for playoffs. You know, when you have a game manager like Flacco in there, this is the the. I've been bummed out since the moment it happened that we lost Nick Chubb. I am low key. I'm a little depressed about this. Yeah, but, no kidding. Um, you, buddy, by far favorite. Pl- I mean, nothing against the other guys. It, Nick Chubb is my favorite Brown. Almost I think most people would say that. Yeah. yeah. And I, man, he's just such a dog. His work ethic is second to none. And he was a talent like nothing we had seen since before I was born. I'm not going to, you know, name names. I think Nick Chubb's one of the best running backs we've ever had, though. Um, And he would be making a huge, huge difference for us. Think about the way the defenses would have to prepare for the Browns if we had. Nick Chubb right now. Yeah. But, you know, it's really exciting to think that he, you know, is progressing so well. We might get him back next year. I hate to say anything about next year, 
That's just too much of a Browns thing to do. And we're still in it this year. So I'm optimistic for this year too, but I want that guy back. I don't think there's anything wrong with saying the future's bright. I mean, it doesn't yeah, doesn't take away from what's going on I, right now. What's going on right now is something that, I mean, if, if you're a Browns fan that's willing to sit back and enjoy this ride, you'll never forget right. the season. Exactly. And we got a, not only a bright future, but after next season, we're getting all our first round picks back. Right. And then all the guys that Andrew Barry's already drafted this year, last year, the year before, they're just going to continue to grow. I mean, and you look at the free agents that Andrew Barry's able to bring into this team. The future's bright, but also the future of this season is bright. Everything's looking good. I know it's been down because we've lost the last two games. The games ended ugly, both of them. But like I said to start the show, Browns are in both of those games. As ugly as it was the whole way through, we were essentially tied up until we made a crucial mistake on offense toward the end of each of those games, and it just collapsed the whole thing. We can avoid that this week. I think we get the win against Jacksonville. Absolutely. It's very very possible. All right. Well, appreciate everybody joining us on Friday night again as we preview this game coming up on Sunday. It's okay. It's okay to be excited about the Browns still. It really is. Don't fan scared. This team has shown all season that against all odds, they can find a way to win. It doesn't happen every single week, but it's the NFL, especially with what we're dealing with. I think we got to a point where we were expecting this team to pull it out one way or another every week. That's not realistic, but we are still 7-5. and five. Everything's on the table right now. 100%. Absolutely. Hey, right. Browns fans, if you're interested, come standing in the rain with me on Sunday. Let's get crazy. <laughs> Let's get wild up there. Let's make that stadium a little rowdy. <laughs> yeah, if you, I'll be I mean, sitting in the away section. Yeah, over hit it. in Fight City. So hit us up on the ready. socials if you guys want to, you know, link up with Justin at the game if you're going to be there and say hi. We love seeing you guys when we're out and about and, and stuff like. Absolutely. If you ever, if you ever see us, I mean, not that we're recognizable people, but I mean, seriously, if you see us and we have we had that one of us is recognizable, but he's not here. He's not here tonight. That's right. But <laughs> remember, we were at training camp two years ago, and we a couple people behind us were like. Not sure if they wanted to say anything. And finally, their mom said, hey, are you guys a podcast? And we're like, yes. <laughs> so it's cool. We love talking to you guys. It's always fun to hear from you and see you in, in person. If you want yep. to be recognized, hang out with Blake more. There's just some, <laughs> something about it. Blake gets shouted out more. like department yeah. stores and stuff. Yeah, he does. Yeah. If you want to hang out with the number one Cleveland Browns fan, come up to Cleveland and meet my mom on uh, <laughs> Sunday. She'll be there. <laughs> Just don't say anything uh, Naked. bad about Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah. And don't take her parking space, guys. <laughs> Talk to it. <laughs> All right. Well, everybody in the chat, we love you guys. Appreciate you again. Like this yep. video. Subscribe on YouTube here. It really helps out the show. Head to jointhedogs.com if you want to get into, do the seven-day free trial and jump into Discord this weekend with us. Hang out. It's a lot of fun. You talk to anybody in there. We have all kinds of personalities. I admit I'm a ledge sitter. I, from the beginning of the game, I'm like, oh, we're doomed. This, oh, everything's going to, you know, we, we screwed this up, screwed that up, penalties. Yeah, but by the end of the game, I'm, I'm still there, ready to go. So it's all fun and games, but we love you guys. Enjoy your weekend. And until we talk to you, hopefully on another Victory Monday, let's go, Browns. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Dogs Podcast. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube and follow us on Twitter at The Dogs Podcast. Get your thoughts on the show at thedogspodcast.com.